Huh? The gator? It drowned it. Yeah, it killed her. Yeah. yeah um, but the gators we're seeing right now, they're only, I mean, the biggest one I've seen lately is maybe eight feet, seven, eight feet long. Normally it takes like a 10 foot gator to kill a dog or a child. What's up everybody, it's Real Cool Adventures. Today I'm gonna to show you how to keep shad alive from start to finish, how to catch them, and how to acclimate them and put them in your bait well. For starters, what I'm gonna do is, I have a 100 gallon bait well here, which is really big. A lot of people don't have a bait well or a boat that big to keep it alive, but it's real important with shad, they're fragile, to have a large volume of water going in a circle. If you don't have a bait well this big, you can do almost the same thing with a garbage can in your boat. But follow me right here. What I've done is this is where the drain comes. See how I poked all these little holes and I stuck a pipe in here and capped it off? That's so once we go catch these shad, I mean, I'm gonna fill this up. And the water, it's real important that the water fills in from the top. So that way when the shad get in there and they're stressed out and everything that their body excretes, it goes to the bottom, drains right out, and the ammonia and stuff doesn't kill the other bait. Now, the reason I have all those little teeny holes on there is when these, these shad are real fragile and soft. And when they start swimming in a circle, if that hole was to directly come out of that drain and they swim by, they would stick on the side and it would kill them. And you don't want that. This way, if something would have come on the side and start to stick here, water can bypass it and it creates, there's no suction that will kill the fish. Same, same concept with a pool or a hot tub. That's why you have two separate drains so your kid doesn't get stuck on one side. All right, now let's go catch the bait. I'm gonna show you how to locate them, find them, cast at them, keep them alive, and then after that, we're gonna catch all types of stuff. Okay, so now we're taking off, we're gonna go out, we're gonna locate the shad. It's the middle of the day, probably the hardest time to find bait because people are driving all over the place and it's just not that easy. But what, is it to our advantage if you don't have a depth finder okay any lake that's holding shad normally in the set in the middle of the day what the shad will do is they'll go ball up in the center of the lake and you can find what i call an indicator species a pelican an osprey something that's flying around let's see right there's a pelican something that's flying around and he knows the baits there he can't see them in low light conditions early morning so it makes it really easy if you don't have a depth finder you can literally watch these pelicans as soon as they hit the water you just have your buddy drive the boat right up Throw the cast net next to that because what the pelican's doing, he's going right into a large round school of bait that can be anywhere from 5, 10, 15, 20 feet wide. He's going, driving right in, grabbing one of those baits. And what we'll do is pull up, throw our net, grab them, put them in the bait well, and we're on our way. So now that's being said, if Cam, if you turn around, look at all these birds right here. See those? Those are our indicators. Actually, those are the wrong type of bird. Um, to the left of those, it's real important that you locate the right birds. Some of those other birds, there's this upwelling where the air is pushing up and they're just doing the whirly bird. Those birds are irrelevant. What we're looking for is birds that prey and eat the shad, okay? So what we have here, there's several ospreys. There's two ospreys right here. They're doing a nice tight circle, which means there's probably a large school of bait right there. But what I like to find, which to me is the best and the easiest thing to find, is a pelican. And there's a pelican right there behind me. Okay, see that pelican? See the way he fly, he's flying right there? And I guarantee you within several minutes, what he's gonna do, he's gonna crash down into that school of bait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my cast net ready, fill the bait well full of water, and then all I have to do is, oh, here he goes. Watch, get it ready. Oh, he saw something. He's gonna come back around and do it again. And when you see him come up and they do this, woo, 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 that crazy little flutter, that's when they put the brakes on, they're watching the schools of bait that are coming up and down like a roller coaster, and they're pouncing on them. They're using every opportunity they can to survive, just like we are. Now here he is again. He just came back in the middle of the lake. That bird is nice and active, which is a really good sign. It shows me that there's a lot of bait that's moved into the lake. And it's high noon, and the jet skis are out too. Which we don't like that, but what are you gonna do? That jet skier just completely scared everything away. That is not a good indicator species. That's called a sea dew and they're not very good for fishing. This is 
is how you run and gun for shag. Pelicans are bombing, diving like an F-18 Hornet. We're coming in like a rapture. We're gonna take out the enemy right now. So a lot of times in South Florida, pretty much anywhere, when you're, when you're fishing a new body water or a large lake and you need to read and you want to figure out the contour of the lake, the depth and where stuff is. Okay, when I was a kid, I lived on this lake for 20 years and a lot of this stuff wasn't here. They were literally fields. But if you look, if you look back behind us and if you see the way these yards come up and some of them come up like this, 5, 10, 15 feet, I know that it's shallow there because they didn't really bring a lot of fill. They didn't dig a lot of that to build the house. But if you move your way this way and you follow us a little this way, that house is 20 feet up in the air. That's because years ago when they were dredging this lake, they literally dug giant holes and pulled the fill up on there. So I know for a fact there's a deeper spot here. That's why the baits congregate and they hold in these spots. So whenever you get to a lake, if you kind of read the shoreline a lot of times and you see a hill or something and it's man-made, that's because they pulled that muck and that dirt and that fill up on the shore and that's going to be a nice deep spot and you're going to probably want to lock that into your uh, GPS because that's where the fish are. And if there's bait, there's fish. I promise you that. This lake is anywhere from about 8 to 20 feet deep, 20 being the deepest, okay? What I've done is I've set my depth finder up. Knowing that this lake's only 20 feet, I have my depth finder set on 19, 20 feet, this one on 15 feet. Oh, I just marked a school bait right there. Now, the reason I do that is because I can get a more accurate reading when my spectrum of, of my water column is from here to here. If I go like this, it's gonna look like a little school of bait up here and you're gonna overshoot it and you're not gonna be able to read it accurately. So you wanna calibrate your depth finder to the depth, the, the largest depth that you're in, you want to go to that and leave that setting there and that'll that'll give you a way more accurate description of where the bait is. Now what I'm doing is I'm idling along and a pelican just dropped over here so I know there's going to be bait in this area. Now I don't know if you can see it with the light, it's really hard to see. I marked a school, a little school of bait down there towards the bottom. Okay we're in 15 feet of water. I guarantee you that is not what we're looking for. If you cast net something down deep on the bottom like that, you're going to get hung up with catfish, um, some type of debris under the water, and stuff you don't want. The shad really need that sunlight. They, they use that to survive. So they will stay on the top of the water column, anywhere from, let's say the deepest spot of the, of the lake is 10 feet, they're going to be from 5 feet and above. If you mark stuff from halfway down into the bottom, they are not shad. They're probably going to be, uh, God only knows what, bass anything. There's all types of weird stuff everybody's let go here. Uh, speckle perch, stuff like that. But that's not what we're looking for today. We want stuff that's from halfway through the water column to the surface. And then another thing is, like the pelican for instance, there's no way that pelican can physically dive down into the water and go down that deep. He's hitting that school of bait that's anywhere from four feet to the top. So what I'm doing now is I'm driving around and I'm looking and I'm trying to mark a school of bait and I kind of want it to be round, okay? Because it's a ball. I want that ball of bait. I don't want some scattered little baits because they're really hard to cast it that way. So I'm trying to locate some bait that's in the top of the water column. Once I mark them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the boat, get my net ready, come upwind of it, and drift right on that spot. And what I'm gonna use is an indicator. Once I mark them there, you can just take a leaf or anything like this. So for instance, let's say, let's say I mark bait right here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that leaf, throw it right there. Okay, I throw that in the water. It's gonna stay right over top of those baits. I turn the boat around, get set up, and I use that leaf as an indicator. I find that leaf, throw the cast it on that leaf, and I know the bait are underneath it. It sinks down, I got them, and we're on our way to catch fish. I mark them, I'm gonna turn around. It's like I'm on the toilet. It's go time. Throw my leaf over there. I cast that right on the leaf. All right, get ready. Watch that I'll hit you because I'm about to knock these little fish out. Wah! It's for you, baby. Let it sink down. And I like to pull the net at an angle so it closes on them and they can't swim underneath it. Oh. 
Oh my gosh. Wait, do you see the size of this era primer? Ugh. That's not what we're looking for, but that is a big giant blue tilapia. Tilapia catch clean cook. Yeah, that, that is a cast net ruiner. We're not trying to catch those today. Look at the size of that. Nice big fat filet. We don't catch anything, we'll eat that. And it's legal to cast at them because they're invasive. Oh. Thought that was a ball of bait, it was so big. Now we're looking for them. Absolutely worst throw in the world. Watch that'll get him. Got a couple, not really many as we wanted, but it's the right species. Get warmer. Well, we're gonna crash into the wall. All right, right species, those are shad, that's what we're looking for. But I barely caught the edge of the school, but we got them. Let me see if we can catch a couple more and go fishing. Now those baits are a little big. I don't want to use baits that big. So I'm gonna try to find a different school. I want something about as big as my pinky or my index finger. For a largemouth bass, that'd be an ideal size, but for these peacocks and stuff, I want something small. I like to use a little hook, something a little more agitated. I'm gonna try where that bird just hit over there. Come on, bird, dive right in front of me. There he goes. Eyes off the prize. Here's the bird is our indicator. Bird's the word. Bird's the word. Tangled cast net. If I can get it ready in time. Yeah. That doesn't catch one. We got Moby Dick. The beluga whale. Oh yeah. That's what we're looking for right there. The little juveniles. See that? Those are perfect little shad. Those are exactly the size we want. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Take those little wigglers. Just enough. Got probably three dozen. It's enough to catch something. Let's go catch something. Oh, got more in the net here. They're jumping everywhere. That's the size I like right there. That's the number one bait in the world. You can find those in any large freshwater body of water where there's bass, and that's what they love to eat. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the water. Now we got those. I could sit here and do that all day, fill the whole thing up, but if you catch too many, they die really fast. So I got three dozen baits, that's all we need. Now let's go fishing. You gotta get up and move. You gotta get up and move. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed it. That's how you locate shad in the middle of Lake Ida by using pelicans. We'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs>